The reason he takes the blame is we got the plan, one of the first ones to get the plan. We got it out and we had biologists study the plan. And these were some of the people that used to do those plans that retired. And they all came back with, he should have never signed the plan. Well, he signed the plan without really knowing what was in it. And we went and tried to get him to open up to us and work with him and tell him, if it's okay, if we made a mistake, let's go and try and fix it. And instead, we saw the heels digging in. One constraint of the plan was agreed to way farther than was required. And the state, or WDFW to date, never would produce an answer for us why they went this far, which basically takes the saltwater fisheries and shuts a lot of them down and constrains a little bit left. We have one of the best economies in the United States, and this, is, this would do the exact opposite to all our, our boating businesses, our tackle shops, uh, marinas, and, and then not to mention our kids and grandkids wouldn't be able to go saltwater fishing. It, there would be very, very little saltwater fishing open. He kept digging his heels in and he was going to let this plan go the way it is. I mean, they were going to go ahead and administer this, administer this plan, which was going to put a lot of businesses out. of out they're going to bankrupt them you know and we have a lot of friends that have helped us over the years that own you know they have boat sales they have families they have uh they have a lot of staff and it would have hurt them all it would have hurt washington state and us the fishermen and we didn't see people engaging at the level that needed to be done to fight this off and this is something we do that most people don't have a clue we do but the director stayed on course and so we had to enlighten the commission because the commission's our voice and we had to explain a lot of the issues mistakes were made they weren't owned and tried to fix so we had to just keep going until we turned the heat up high enough that he had to resign or other options had to be done i wish him well and in, in his future endeavors he's a nice guy he'd be your best fishing buddy um we we were good friends you know and this was a tough thing to have to do but it had to be done for Washington State. It's up to us to go ahead and make sure that we learn and make sure the next person that we put in there is the proper person. That person has to understand how our fisheries are worked and managed. We have to be able to work with the tribes. The tribes are a huge component. Right now we have some giant issues that are coming up that are hugely hurting our fisheries, such as harbor seals. They're hurting our orcas now. They have to be able to understand how the fisheries are administered, how they're split up, how the seasons are made, and they still gotta be able to oversee the Department of Fish and Wildlife, because it's a very big agency. And, um, it's, not just about, it's not just about fish. It's not just it. about fish, but fisheries are the most complex part. With ESA, with tribal, um, it's, it's a tough road. The next person has to have a very strong backbone because it's, it's, it's probably one of the toughest jobs there is. And it really is. And when I met Director Unsworth the first day, I said, you know, welcome to Washington. This is the toughest job there is in Washington State. And I truly believe that. The person has to have a, an extensive background and they got to understand how to manage these fisheries. They got to understand how they're fished, but on the same time, you have to be able to make sure that when there's ample fishing that can come forward, we can do that. Not just keep cutting them and cutting them, but there's some major problems, some habitat issues. And we need to get with somebody like that that can meet with us and the tribes and we can start working those out.